Maybe I should take that advice, go get a life or maybe get a job or something. Pack it up and head back home, tell everybody I was bluffing. Or maybe I'll just get out my head and focus on what I know's coming. Yeah. Cause I can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams. Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between. These voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me that I'm a fool for trusting in these wings. Drinking themselves crazy tonight <laughs> Maybe I should call and say told you I'd be right Wondering how long it was before you realized The biggest mistake of your life And now you're paying the price Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way I feel like I ain't never losing Your opinion of mine, you know just what I'm choosing I gotta do this Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud And they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings But maybe, baby, this will fly Time in the week, the two top teams in the KMAC face off, this time for sole possession in first place. The Cardington Lincoln Lady Pirates look to get back to the top of the mountain as they face the Centerburg Lady Trojans, who gave them their second loss just seven days ago. We got all the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have with pregame coming your way next.
guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Welcome you inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services pregame show for this <coughs> KMAC game of the week between the two top squads in the conference on the girls' side. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Brardy, alongside former Buckeye Central and current Tiffin University girls assistant coach Abram Capel. Abe, you've been coaching in games like these the last few years. This is a big one. First place outright and you have a clear path to a championship. Yeah, honestly, having league title implications on the line on a Friday night, there's not much more you can ask for in late January. And, and fortunately, like you said, I was uh, able to coach in a few of those games, and, and they were exciting. And, and I know both coaches all day long are nerves and jitters, and hopefully the kids are relaxed and are able to put forth their best performance And in hopes of you know having that KMAC trophy sit in their trophy case over the next you know 12 months. And let's get right into the pregame show and take a look at the visiting team spotlight, the team that gave Hardington its second loss in conference just last Saturday, and that is the Centerburg Lady Trojans under head coach Bill Abner. 11-3 overall. They've got a chance at a good seed, not only a KMAC championship, especially with a win tonight. That'll boost their RPI. 50.6 points per game, and they only give up 35.9. They're a very, very good defensive squad, Coach. Yeah, they are. And, you know, I was just looking online earlier today at some of their scores, right? Those three losses are a combined 15 points, right? So there, there's there's a, you know, conversation where they could be, you know, 14-0, 13-1, things like that. And a lot of times a recipe for success at this level is being sound on the defensive end and holding teams to 35 points per game is – you know, a direct correlation to their 11 and three record. One of our players to watch for tonight in the player's spotlight is a girl that really showed out in the first game. That's Kenley Farrell, the sophomore guard. She scored seven against Cardington in that game. But 5.3 points per game. The big thing, like you said, defense, she has 4.4 steals per contest. So that's, that's something else that Centerberg loves to do is to get out and transition off of those steals. Yeah, I mean, anytime you got a kid that's averaging four and a half steals a game, that's, you know, in, in our, from a coaching standpoint, that's an opportunity for eight more points and four extra possessions that you have that the other team that you're playing does not. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to kind of see her play and watch her create havoc on the defensive end. Now let's take a look at the home team spotlight, the Lady Pirates of Cardington. They've been in this situation a lot especially in the KMAC. Other than last year, they ran the table pretty much every season the KMAC's been in existence. 45.1 uh, points per game, 44.6. Shooting 41% from two, 26% from three, and 53% from the line. However, they averaged 13.4 steals per game and 11.4 assists. They, they share the love on the offensive end and they create, create havoc on the defensive end. 
Yeah, and, and you kind of just alluded to it, that Cardington has, has been a staple and one of the best girls basketball programs for the past decade, um, especially since I've kind of been paying attention a little bit to it more. And a number that kind of jumped out to the line is 11 and a half assists per game. Um, that tells me that they're unselfish, they're well coached, and they move the ball well, and they're not one dimensional. So we'll see how they kind of counterattack and look to bounce back from last week's loss uh, to the Lady Trojans. All right, we're going to send it down to the floor now for the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. And our memory to respect the game. Thank you. The officials assigned to this contest have been selected and assigned according to procedures adopted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. The officials are Jeff O'Brien. Doug O'Brien and Greg Brannigan. Now to honor America, please stand and take off your hats as Carrington Lincoln Jr. Kelly Moreland sings our national anthem. Great job there by one of Cardington's own to sing the national anthem as we get back inside the pregame show. And now look at the player to watch for for the Lady Pirates of Cardington High School. And it is freshman Jill Berkey. 7.3 points per game, 5.5 rebounds, but she kept Cardington in it on Saturday. 15 points to lead away for the Lady Pirates. So one of those players that, you know, had to step in early in her career, but she's really shown off. Yeah, I mean, 15 points for a freshman in a game of that magnitude kind of says a lot about her. My guess is, right, a few years ago, they had a girl um, down here in Cardington, Casey, I think Berkey was her yeah. name. Yeah. Um, a really nice player as well. So my guess is that's probably her sister. Yeah. Um, Got to and if her career is anything like hers, she's going to be a fantastic player for the Lady Pirates. And there's Jill Berkey, her sister, getting introduced. But now let's take a look at our keys to victory tonight, Coach. For Centerburg, they did this against Cardington. Both of these, they created havoc. They got in the transition out of those turnovers, and they scored buckets. And that was the difference in their game, their 52-44 victory. And you know defense yourself. That's most teams. Centerburg's playing a coach's dream right now. They're turning teams over, and they're getting it in transition. Yeah, and any time that you can do that creates easy offense. I know Cardington traditionally plays a 1-3-1 zone, uh, which can be difficult to score against. So I'm sure Coach Abner is saying, hey, let's try to get some easy ones, get out on top, and then, you know, maybe get Cardington to come out of their zone and play them in a traditional man-to-man -man, um, would probably be better to serve, considering a lot of teams don't play 1-3-1. It's a little unique to play against. And Cardington's keys, less than 15 turnovers, and also get back, get back in that transition. So just the direct opposite, pretty much, of what Centerberg needs to do. But anytime you get under 15 turnovers and anytime you play good transition defense, you're in any game. No, absolutely. And, you know, if, if Centerberg hands their, excuse me, hangs their hat in terms of creating havoc, 15 is a good goal. And if you, you're able to do that, you're going to be in a position to win the game when it comes to the fourth quarter. And here is the starting lineups brought to you by Morrow County Job and Family Services. The same as Saturday. Farrell, Stowe, Shepard, Bryant, Johnson, 
And on the other side, Calkins, Berkey, Hess, Hardwick, and Henthorn. As we are underway, Cardington takes the opening tip. Quickly inside, layup short. Rebound going to take be taken out of there by Shepard. And actually, instead of Bryant, it's actually Kayla Larimore that is in there. Kayla, one of the top scorers in the Knox Morrow Athletic Conference. And immediately they get right to her. Perfect entry, and it's 2 nothing. Yeah, great little set there kind of to open the game, just a 1-4 high and threw it to one elbow and had the other one kind of dive opposite and an easy layup there. Madison Calkins kicks it back out. A 1-3-1 one, one look by Centerberg. Hardwick with the tough bucket. Somehow she was able to tiptoe her way along the baseline, work her way in for the lay-in. Two all. Yeah, it's a great take there. And, you know, I said in the pregame, I thought Cardington was going to play some 1-3-1. One, one, and turns out Centerberg's a 1-1-3-1, one, 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 and Cardington's a one play man. So maybe a bit of a switch up from what we saw on Saturday, you know. How hard is it playing a team twice in a week? Never had to do it. Wow. I'm Never. surprised. Well, the Northern 10 probably had that worked out perfectly. But. Yeah, unless, you know, this was a makeup game. Um, but, no, I mean, it's definitely a quick turnaround to make adjustments if, if, you're, the, if you're the coaching staff. About two minutes gone by in this one. It is two all. As Cardington just working it around the perimeter, trying to get it inside against this 1-3-1. One, one. Nearly gets the steal, now it's a five on four. Skip pass inside the Berkey, she's fouled. And she'll get free throws out of this. It's the first foul of the night. Yeah, this is a great pass here by Lydia Hess. Looking diagonal. Fouls on Kennedy Glenn, her first. The first of the night. Berkey to the line for two. And Cardington has its first lead. Yeah, Bricky was kind of hiding behind that zone. And like I mentioned, Hess had a nice pass there. Gets herself to the free throw line. And that's what you like to see out of a 1-3-1 one, one, is that quick diagonal pass inside. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Cardington's got four points, two at the free throw line and two in the paint, um, which is good that you're not going to settle for jump shots against that zone. And their height advantage might be key in this one. Physicality as well underneath. Centerberg had a lot of second chances because they just out-hustled Cardington. That'll be a jump ball. It'll stay with Centerberg here, but they collapse down on Laramore, and they got the jump. Out to Glenn, the three-point specialist, but she'll kick it out straight away in and out. Rebound to Calkins. Hardwick nearly lost it twice. She'll drive in. And then off the leg of Calkins and out of bounds, the first turnover against Cardington. Looked like they were trying to force that issue. Yeah, a little bit. And Farrell does a good job here for, for Centerberg to kind of speed them up a little bit. Just got them playing a little faster than what they wanted to in that possession and it results in a turnover. Cardington leading by two here early on. Glenn will kick it back out to Farrell. Now to Shepard. She's got an open hole, takes mm. it up and takes it in. And that's they did that a lot in their game on Saturday. A lot of lapses taking advantage of those. No, that's a great take off the bounce. Kind of saw her defender standing up, and she just ripped and went right by her. And a turnover. Again, trying to force the issue, and Laramore comes out with it. Kicks it to Farrell. So they work it around. Coming up on 440 left in the first. It's tied at four. Shepard's going to try a three off the side iron. Rebound to Abigail Hardwick. There's your down pass, but no diagonal yet. Yeah, Centerbridge really trying to take away that high post here with there's two Farrells. And yeah, <laughs> so that ball deflected. But you see, it looks like Cardington's trying to pull the box overload there against the 1-3-1. But 
not a lot of movement around to open that up. No, and that's kind of what you got to do. You do got to overload it to one side. Um, you know, as a coach, you want it to get to the high post, but Centerbrook's kind of taking that away. Three in the air, no good. Larry Moore comes out with it. Gets it over the Kennedy Glen, then back out to reset the Kenley Farrell. It was a 13-10 first quarter the last time these two teams met. This time, both defenses really closing things down. Yeah, and it's a little two different approaches here. Cardington is, is, is a little bit softer. They're kind of trying to keep people in front. Glenn's going to pull for three, and she hits. Kennedy Glenn, she had three threes on Saturday. That's her first. Centerberg leads again. Yeah, it's a good-looking shot for there. Or excuse me, for her. Great pass, and, and like I said, that Cardington's playing in the gap, so it's a little bit longer closeout here. So she has time to get a shot like that off. So good pass and way to knock it down, and maybe you know maybe that kind of forces Cardington to play a little bit more um, in the passing lanes here on defense. And Glenn, that's, she's one of those players in the K-Mac that she can be four, five, six feet beyond the, the line and still drill it. Laramore's now going to try the three. It's off the back iron. Long rebound out to the Lady Pirates. They'll try to push things for a second. They'll back it out to Hardwick. 2.45 left first, 7-4 Centerberg. We're about to have our first substitution of the evening. Inside the Calkins, there. off her hands, but they say it was Ooh. last touched by Centerberg. So we take a look at our Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County replay. Maggie Halibrin will come in and replace Lydia Hess. Halibrin had two points off the bench on Saturday. And now Chesney Farrell. So the two Farrells in there for Centerberg. Get it back out to Hardwick. There's Centerbrook that. has really good length, and they, they do a good job of keeping their arms up, and there's another turnover by Cardington. And they kind of bait you as well. Yeah, 100%. They do a really good job with what they're running. They have that athleticism to be able to do so. So Laramore. As well as Kenley Farrell, as Farrell mo moves through their motion offense. Now to Evie Stowe as they'll reset with two minutes left in the first. 7 4 the score. Clara Johnson also into the game for Centerberg. Straightaway three, yes! Good ball movement there. Oh, and they force a quick turnover in the backcourt here by Cardington. Fifth turnover on the Lady Pirates as you see the three. Yeah, Coach Hardwick wants a timeout to kind of talk things over. And Centerberg, a couple threes give them the 10-4 lead here with 142 left. Want to say hello to everybody watching live and free tonight. Our KMAC Game of the Week here from Cardington High School. Our first time at Cardington this season as well. Do have some fans watching and comments as well. Jim Allum watching. Daniel Stotts as always. Daniel. Tanner Slusher the pirate ship. Not only is he commenting but he's in person here somewhere. Here at home. So hello to Tanner. Got to meet say hello to him earlier on. And Josh Johnson number one. Number 22 Feral Girls. Thunder and Lightning. Makes I'd rather, sense. I'd like shake and bake, but, you know, <laughs> they're maybe too young to understand that one. And that just tells how old we are. Makes sense. Out of the timeout, Centerberg looking to extend on its lead as we hit 90 seconds left in the first. Yeah, and during that timeout, Coach Hardwick's kind of saying, you're not going to be able to get it all back in one possession, right? Mm -hmm. And Especially it's early on, too. Yeah, so there's, there's no need to kind of hit the panic button. Glenn for three. Got another. That is yeah, not you, what they wanted out no, of No, you don't want to leave her open. Um, on 
On the other end, three no good. Offensive board, put back no. Another chance, and they get the answer. Great job there by Maggie Hallibrin by keeping that offensive rebound high. Just boarded it, went straight back up, didn't try to collect herself. And on the other end, we'll get a foul. And free throws for the first time tonight for Centerburg. Centerburg wasted no time after the made basket by getting that out of the net, you know, and, and, and forcing Cardington to, like we talked about in the pregame, transition defense. Um, kind of caught him sleeping a little bit and took advantage, got himself back to the free throw line. And she hits the first. Tierra's third point. Drains both. Four of the five starters for Centerburg on the scoring column already. Under a minute left. Bardington looking for an answer. Mid-range jumper just a little too strong. Rebound tipped by Centerburg out of bounds. And it'll stay. Stay with the Lady Pirates here. With 37.3. Oh, no. And another turnover. Great pass. Deflected out, so at least the transition was stopped there by Hardwick, who was able to get back and really. Yeah, did a good job of presenting, preventing an easy layup. I like I like the pass or the idea that the pass that, was, that Johnson was going to make just kind of bounced it off Hardwick's foot and at least puts him in a half-court offense. Glenn's going to try her third three. Too strong. Rebound to Cardington. I love that set. The Centerberg just ran out of that sideline out of bounds. Little flare screen. Forced it in again and turns it over. That's the seventh Cardington turnover of the first quarter. Final shot most likely upcoming here by Centerberg. Johnson's going to drive. She's going to get fouled and completely take away what I just said as she'll get two free throws with 5.5 remaining. You know, about 40, 50% of the time I'm right when I say they take the last shot. Oh, it could still be the but last shot, Travis. That's true. I appreciate last that. I appreciate that, yes. Johnson to the line for two. Gets the first. Cardington's got to find a way to figure out the zone here in between the quarter break. Um, you know, Centerbrook stretches their lead here to 10, and like you said, seven turnovers, just, just a couple too many this early on in the game. That was on Genevieve Longsdorf, who just came in. So I guess that was the last shot of the, the quarter. But Centerburg, looking like they want to win the KMAC championship. They lead by 10 after one. First quarter by Centerburg, 16-6 with a 10-point lead after one. Travis Berardi back here with Abram Capel. And this is a prime example of what Centerburg did in that first quarter is create turnovers. Yeah, and that's not what you want to see if you're Coach Kevin Hardwick. First possession out, thrown right back into the hands of, of the Lady Trojans. Shepard into the lane and travels. It's a good call. 
So the Lady Pirates forced the first turnover on Centerburg tonight. So not only are they forcing turnovers, but Centerburg's doing a really good job of really keeping control of the ball. No, and early on, that's kind of been the story of the game as far as the turnovers and the extra possessions. Offensive rebound deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Cardington. Cardington's just got to be a little bit more patient, use some pass fakes here in the half court, kind of get the defense to move with your eyes and the ball fakes. Centerbrook's being extremely aggressive in the passing lanes. Trying to look around to get it inside once again. And this might be where something, where they maybe try and pull a couple of threes just to extend that defense out as they turn it over again. Yeah, Lydia Hess for, uh, for Cardington's not really looking to shoot at the, top of the, at the top of the key there. Maybe they replace her with the shooter and force Centerberg to kind of step out a little bit. Three in the air, won't go, but an offensive board. First of the night for Centerberg. Laramore. Kick off the foot, out of bounds. It will stay with the Lady Trojans. Just underway second quarter. Still yet to have the first score of the quarter. We were talking about Centerberg's length on defense and that physicality kind of reminds me of your squad a couple years ago when you went to the Final Four. I know you need shooters like Laramore just did. Thank you for showing me that, <laughs> Kayla. The ability to shoot from baseline to about the volleyball line, but not only that, play good defense. That's what could get you far in a tournament. No, absolutely, and Centerberg definitely has the pieces. I mean, they've shown early on here as they stretch their lead to 13, They've kind of done it inside and out and on the defensive end. So they look tough here through a quarter and a couple minutes. And like you said, the three losses for Centerburg, Combined. still close ones. A kind of a head scratcher, the loss to Mount Gilead, but that's what the K-Mac is. Any given night, somebody can knock somebody off. And that's the beauty of basketball, too, yeah. is, is you got to be able to come play every night. I know your buckets are down from last couple years, but they went and knocked off Winford, who was undefeated. And so, no, yeah. You know, and, and things like that happen every night. You just... If you're hot, catch a team maybe on an off night, that combined, get a good victory. Yeah, and you always got to remember, too, you're dealing with high school kids, right? I mean, a tough math test throughout the day can dictate how you're going to play at night. I wouldn't know that. I passed all my classes. Wink, wink. You know Laramore who else passed things? Back. Laramore. Five threes in the first half for Centerburg. They lead 22-6. They've shot the ball extremely well. And another turnover, momentum, Lady yeah. Trojans, and another timeout as it's been all Centerburg. Coach Hardwick wants to talk it over again. You know, he's doing all the right things, and I'm sure the message in the huddle is, is exactly what they need to, but they're just, they're just getting sped up a little bit, and they're just trying to play a little bit too fast. You're down 16, but right now you kind of got to set small goals for yourself. Have a goal, let's try to cut this to eight by the half and then move forward from there. So have, I guess, many games within the game to kind of get yourself in a position and tell your kids, hey, we can't get it back. There's no 16-point shot in basketball. So You've been talking to Joe Baylog, haven't you? It's the small games. It's win, I, win segments of a quarter. I know in the four, teams in the fourth quarter, you're down 10, 15 points. Win the first two minutes by three. Win the second two minutes by three. You keep playing those many games, it gets you back into it. It gets you back into For it. Sure. Kind of like a chess. It's like chess, I guess. You know, the moves and counter moves. I haven't talked to Joe, but if Joe Baylog says that, and then I can say it too, then that means at some point I have done something right or somebody has taught me right. So. Well, I mean, you led a team to a Final Four as well. So, I mean, you're, you're not that bad of a coach, coach. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. A lot of talent took us there too. Would, hey. have been a, would have been a tough team to screw it up. Talent and coaching. I mean, you got to set the line up. You got to tell them at least where to go. That's right. And then they run it. On so, occasion, you know, that's right. Run the practice. You get the, you get the motivation in there, things like that, you know. For sure. I mean, it's mostly the kids, but you got to take a little credit. 
Back to action. It's been all Centerburg here. A 6-0 start to the second quarter as I'm up 22-6. Stowe back to Shepard calling for a screen and nearly throw it away. Ball on the ground and a jump ball. It will stay with Centerburg. Well, step in the right direction if you're the Lady Pirates, right? Showing a little bit more energy there. Force a jump ball, a near turnover. See if we can string together a couple stops here. Prevent this from getting out of hand. If you get this to, you know, 20, it's going to be a tough sled in the, the, the second half. There and it they is. get a steal. Hardwick into the lane. Good. She's going to get fouled, and she's going to go to the line. That's exactly what you want to do. Not, I know it's still five minutes left in the second, but you want to get, you want to create fouls, and you want to get points with the clock stopped. No, absolutely, and she did a good job there of, of kind of putting the pressure and keeping Lara Moore on her heels there in defensive transition, works herself to the free throw line, got to convert here. Gets the first free throw. I'd like to see if Coach Hardwood kind of switches defense here out of a made free throw, just to throw a different look at Centerburg. They look very confident and very comfortable on the offensive end, so just kind of try to keep them off balance, see if he gets in anything here. Maybe throw a full court press at you, but yeah, nonetheless, no. they don't. Just want to kind of keep doing what they're doing. and Fourth. Well, maybe. They look like they did switch to a little 1-3-1. One, one. Johnson for three, short, gets her own board, takes it up, blocked out of bounds. Great, great block here by Joe Berkey here off the miss. Saves an easy two points. And once again, the freshman really showing off. You know who else is showing off? Kayla Larimore. Yeah, she's kind of feeling it right now. Ten points in the first half. It's 24 to 8. Larimore, the leading scorer in the Knox Marrow Athletic Conference, 19.1 points per game. Yeah, easy to see why. She's done it at all three levels. She's had a she's had a post up, there's a mid-range there, and she's hit two threes, and that's where she gets her ten points. She's also putting up all Ohio numbers because she averages 5.6 rebounds per game as well. And she also is in the top 10 in steals for the Centerburg Lady Trojans. Cardington, though, starting to get some turnovers. Cardington has switched to a 1-3-1 one -one here. Skip pass deflected back out. Under four to play in the half. 24-8 Centerburg. Quick release three. No good. Rebound Laramore. A good look though. A really good look. And here comes Centerburg in transition. And good hustle again by Berkey. And that's what Cardington needs to continue to do. Is force the issue on Centerburg. Make them get into a set, get back, set your defense up. And that's why it was one of my keys to victory because it really hurt them at the second half of last week's game or Saturday's game. Claire Johnson, she has a really quick release here for Centerburg. Into the corner for Calkins. Get it back out to Hess as they work it around. Centerburg just content sitting back, though. Into the lane, scoop, won't go, offensive board. Oh, great pass. Great pass and a great finish. A great pass underneath. Maggie Halliburton follows her own miss. Good awareness as to where her teammate's at. And that's about the easiest bucket they've come by tonight. 24 to 10. Pass inside, Johnson's blocked. And now it's Cardington in transition. Hardwick with a crossover, lays it up and in. Great move. Good outlet pass down here. I don't know who made it. I can't remember the number that, that quickly, but a great outlet pass, and Hardwick gets going in transition, and there's another easy one, and now we cut it to 12. So you get it to eight here by the half, and it's a new game. Exactly. Plenty of time. Laramore, though, just off the mark, and a little more momentum here for Cardington. Yeah, rare miss from her. But here Hardwick. comes Hardwick in transition, yeah. Hawkins looking inside, said skips it over. Hess, mid-range, got it. It's back to a 10-point game. 
Lydia Hess, who did not score against Centerberg, gets a big one here, and Centerberg now feeling some pressure, calls a timeout. Yeah, good timeout here by Coach Abner. I don't think his kids have kind of, I don't think they've done anything wrong. They've missed some shots. They got blocked, and Cardington's just making some plays, and he doesn't want to see this 6-0 run balloon into anything more. So a great timeout there. So 8-8 is the quarter so far. Let's get back into our comments section. Sherry Stoyle, go Trojans. Don Anderson watching from Centerburg. And Marianne Ninniger, way to go Trojans. Thank you all for watching live and free this evening. This kind of de facto KMAC championship game. I don't know if I want to say that just because we've seen last year teams slip down the stretch and other squads taking advantage like Mount Gilead did. They were two games back with about two weeks left. A couple things happened. They ended up being the outright champs. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's not over until it's clinched. That's at any level. Back to action. Centerberg with possession. They lead by 10. Three from the corner. Off the mark. Larimore there with the offensive board. But a jump ball, it'll be a change of possession. Yeah, and it goes back to Cardington. I like the set. The Centerbrook runs out. Kennedy Glenn gets an open three in the corner. I think that's who that was. It was a good look. And Cardington there to, to tie up the offensive yeah. rebound. Now some full court pressure, a 2-2-1 by the Lady Trojans. They usually go three-quarter court, but that time they went pretty much full court. Inside, shot too strong. Calkins offensive board puts it up and in. Fourth offensive rebound by Cardington. Makes it an eight-point game with 90 seconds left in the half, and this thing's been flipped on its head. Stowe back over the Glen into the corner now as they work it around. Gets the open look, and again, can't hit from three. They've all of a sudden gone cold. Looking to get it inside, deflected, and stolen away. 12th Cardington turnover. Laramore, Euros, puts it up. She's fouled and she'll get free throws. Back and forth pretty quick there, a couple of possessions. Good take here by Laramore. Calkins does a pretty good job of being straight up, but there towards the end, she kind of lowers her arms down into her, and that's going to be an automatic whistle. Out of the timeout, Celia Hall checks in for Cardington. Laramore hits the first, back to a nine-point game. Cardington's kind of changing the pace of this game ever, those, ever since they went to zone here about midway through the second quarter. I like the adjustment that's been made. Hits both. And it's back to a 10-point game. As deflected out of bounds, it'll stay with Cardington. But if you're Coach Hardwick, you have to be more pleased now. Even if this is a 10-point advantage for Centerberg at the half, you played even with them in the second quarter. Yeah, no, absolutely. The last... Well. Nearly stolen away, ball on the floor, and it is taken out. However, 13 turnovers is not what he'll be happy with. Shepard along the baseline will skip it across. 20 seconds left in the half. Back out to Stowe, and they will set up the final shot of the half. I think it's safe to say they'll get the final shot this yeah. time, Coach. Looking for the entry pass to Shepard. Laramore with one, forces it up, nothing doing there, and that'll do it for the first half. Centerberg was in control, but Cardington, with a run late, gets it back down to a 10-point Lady Trojan advantage. We'll take a break. When we come back, the halftime report, stats analysis, and much more in this KMAC Game of the Week.
Hi, I'm Joe Baylog, and you're not. Hall of Fame coach turned future Hall of Fame host. Now he's on TV hosting his own. Highlighting our team in the Joe Show Zone. Hall of Fame coach, now a host. Sharing our stories from coast to coast. From the court to the screen, he's the best. Jules like to see Liz on in the Joe Show Quest. Because this is my show. And it's an all new me in the new year. Deal with it. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Join me, Travis Big League Berardi, every other Wednesday for my Country Roads rankings, the top five girls and boys small school basketball squads right here in the area. Exclusively on The Joe Show. Side brought to you live for free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors, Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Stop by Webb's Marathon to join the Webb's Rewards program where you can earn dollars off fuel and free drinks and coffee. Go Trojans! Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Morrow County Job and Family Services. Call the number in the, in the description or visit their location in Mount Gilead to see what services are available for your family. Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Once again, it's 419-946-8480. Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Spherion Mid-Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. And North Central State College, providing individuals with the knowledge, skills, and inspiration to succeed in their chosen paths. Thank you all for allowing us to be live and free this evening. When we come back, 
the Morrow County JFS Halftime Report. better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Welcome back inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services Halftime Report where your score at the break. Centerburg leading Cardington 26-16. Travis Berardi back here with Abram Capel and Coach. Centerburg looked really impressive for about eight-tenths of that first half. Mm -hmm. Cardington, though, showing life at the end of the half. Yeah, the first, let's see, 12 and a half minutes were pretty much dictated by Centerburg, and at one point they kind of looked like they were going to run away with it. Cardington kind of switched to his own, a good timeout, came back a little bit more energized, cut it to eight, you know, going to the half down 10. But it feels a little closer than what that score is, at least at least from my perspective. So, I mean, we'll see if they stay in the zone, continue to force some turnovers, get some easy ones in transition. And again, small goal would be cut this in half at the end of the quarter, get to five going into the fourth and see what you're made of. Here are the stats. Centerburg 13 twos compared to nine. Actually, those are wrong stats. Didn't pop up, so I will just read them off myself as you take a look at the pirate ship. Tanner Slusher, hello to him. But five threes by Centerburg, three twos. They were four or four from the Five of six from the charity stripe. They forced 13 turnovers by Cardington. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a normal Centerburg game. As for the Lady Pirates, six twos. They were five of five from the line, but nothing from beyond the arc. That's kind of the difference right now. And like I said, they had 13 turnovers. They are out rebounding Centerburg 11 to six, but it's turnovers and it's perimeter shooting that's been good for Centerburg tonight. Yeah, and, you know, those five threes that Centerburg made, they were about five for five to start the game is what it felt like. They went yeah. cold there in a little bit of the, the, the back half of the second quarter. Cardington just can't turn the ball over 13 times, right? If you cut that in half, this half, and you keep it under 20, right, you're probably in better position. But Centerburg taking a long time. They're still not on the floor here with just a minute to go. Oh, this is like come. football where you get an extra three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Here they come, though. Coach Abner probably wasn't happy with the last five minutes there that quarter and going back to the drawing board and see if they can extend this lead here. You know, on the flip side, right, if you're Centerburg, you want to kind of push this to 15. You want to stop that momentum that Carding can got Absolutely. The, the first three minutes of the quarter is, is, is pivotal. Score Individual scoring so far. First for Centerburg, Kayla Laramore leading all scores, 12 points. Kennedy Glenn, two threes for six. Tierra Shepard with four, Evie Stowe with three, Clara Johnson with one. As for Cardington, they're led by Abigail Hardwick, seven points, Madison Calkins with four, Joe Berkey, Lydia Hess, Maggie Hallibrand each with two. Score by quarter, 16-6 Centerburg in the first. A 10-10 second gives us our 26-16 score. As we are just about ready for quarter number three here. Coach? You've been in the locker room for a conference clinching game. What do you tell your girls? What are you telling Centerburg right now? A team that hasn't been in this situation a lot. It's been Cardington that's been in this situation playing big games like this. What do you tell them going into the third quarter? No, you, you, you want to tell them that there's an opportunity right in front of them and all the work that they've done over the summer, the team camps, the extra shooting in their own. You know, 
that comes down to these next 16 minutes and you want to take, you know, put your best foot forward and take advantage of what, what opportunity is lying in front of you. They get possession to start quarter number three. Kicks it back out, right side. Glenn open for three, and she's short again. Rebound the Cardington, so a little check for the Lady Pirates as they hold off Centerburg on its first possession. Have a chance to get this back to single digits. Halliburton. Intercepted, threw it right into the hands of Calkins. Kind of threw it right or to her. Farrell, I mean. So we trade turnovers here to start the half. Double team into the corner, gets it to Shepard. She'll kick it back out. Glenn thought about the three. Instead, we'll get it around the, the side. And Farrell, Kenley can't hit, long rebound. And we're going to get a tough luck foul against Laramore there off the board. That'll be her second. And that's her, yeah, that's her second. Something to kind of keep an eye on. As she's clearly been the best player on the floor tonight. Now they do a good job. I would say they hide her. They use her length out here in the front of the zone. But it's difficult to pick up fouls kind of in that position where she's at. And that's big for a 1-3-1. You want that length out front because it just creates so much havoc. A nutmeg nearly into the hands of Abigail Hardwick, and now we're going to get a jump ball. It'll stay with Cardington. But that's the key to a 1-3-1. One, one. Not only the, that back player that can run the baseline, but that front player to have so much length with the arms to really, you know, create a lob instead of a, you know, a harder a pass. A direct pass, yeah. Hardwick kicks it out. Back around. Three for Halliburton. Short. Calkins gets the board. Can't get it. Another offensive board finished off, and it's back to an eight-point game. Jill Berkey with her first field goal. It's 26-18. That's kind of the second offensive rebound putback that Cardington has had where they just kind of caught it and kept it high and made it very simple for them. Shepard can't get it, gets a second attempt, and she's fouled, and will get two free throws. But that's something that Cardington needs to take advantage of the rest of the way is that height and that inside presence. They can't let this happen, though. It happened a lot in the second half against them on Saturday is the wide-open player inside to let, let her get established and take it up. First free throw, no good. That's Abigail Hardwick's first foul. Second free throw in. Nine-point game. Five points for Tierra. She's our MVP in the win on Saturday. Actually, our MVP in the Highland game earlier last week. Lady Trojans up by nine with possession. And Coach. Telling the ladies, slow down. Let's set up a 1-4 low look. Yeah, don't need to be in a huge hurry here. Three in the air, and that time, Glenn knew it. She let it go, and she started running back. She's got nine, and Centerberg forces the turnover, and I mean, that's confidence right there. Left it hanging for a second, started retreating because she knew that was in. Yeah, good skip pass there. I think Stowe's the one who made the pass, but a good strong overhead pass that got there on time, forced the defense into a long closeout, and gave you know Kennedy Glenn a, a great amount of time to get that shot off. And here's the thing, too, is made shots are allowing them to get into their pressure. Mm -hmm. And it immediately speeds Cardington yep, back up. Turned into a turnover. Shepard takes it herself great through stuff. traffic. Really, really good take there by Shepard. She's had a couple of them tonight, just kind of slithering her way. That's what makes her and Laramore so good inside. Offensive foul. Take a look at this, Coach. Shepard getting it done on both ends. And Hardwick. Beat her to the spot. Hardwick called for her second. That's another turnover, the 16th, but We'll put that arm out, maybe not as much of an extension, but still, the bump with it. 
and the Lady Trojans get the ball back now with some of that momentum, up 14. Shepard might have gotten away with a walk there. She's stuck on the ground with it. It's a walk and a turnover. Seventh against Centerberg. Four thirty-six left, third quarter, 32-18, Lady Trojans. Three in the air for Henthorn. Can't get it. Laramore off her hands, out of bounds. It'll stay with Cardington. Yeah, Cardington's kind of, I don't want to say in desperate need, but they're in desperate need of a bucket right now. we got to find a way here maybe on this baseline out to get something quick and easy. Kind of string together a little bit of a run here if you want to stay in it. Gets the inbounds, skipped around to Hardwick. Hall back to Hardwick into the corner to Calkins. Skip pass deflected out by Johnson. We kind of talked about it early. The combination of the length and the speed and the quickness that Centerbrook has, they I mean, listen, this zone, they they run it really, really well, and, and Farrell up top, like you talked about, can't make any direct passes. It's tough to play against. Corner three goes, and there's that much-needed bucket. Kinston Henthorne with their first three, the first three for Cardington. It's back to an 11-point game. Couldn't have come at a bigger time. Couldn't have come at a bigger time. Centerberg looks to answer. Nearly stolen, but stays into the corner. And we'll get a push foul against Cardington. That'll be Celia Hall's first. We'll get a couple substitutions. Lady Trojans into their offense. Farrell into the corner. And that's another thing Centerberg has is most of the time they have two guards that can really handle the ball on the court. Yeah, and they're both sophomores too. You know, and Farrell's only a junior. I was looking at their roster earlier. I mean, that's a really nice young core that they have coming back for next year and off a team that's already obviously shown that they're very solid. It'll be yeah. much more deliberate here. And the two seniors, Kennedy Glenn and Clara Johnson, two players that they're big pieces of this, but their main scoring going to be coming back next year. Cardington fights for that rebound. They get it back. Chance to once again get this to single digits. Hardwick. Good ball movement, though, by Cardington. Into the corner, back around. Just, just as good closeouts by Centerberg to not give up anything there in transition. Berkey. Deflected off of Centerberg, out of bounds. We'll get another substitution as Tierra Shepard comes back from her break. Now this is a tough situation for Cardington as well. They have one KMAC game remaining. They played two more KMAC games than Centerberg due to Centerberg taking a week off because of illness. Centerberg still has to really? play Fredericktown twice as well as East Knox. They have three games remaining after tonight in the K-Mac. Cardington only one. Oh, wow, okay. So that opens things up. Even if Cardington can't come back, there's still a lot of time left. They could, but they need to take, they take care of Mount Gilead, then they're in the clubhouse only a game back. That won't help, though. Kenley Farrell. Going through their offense, out to Laramore. Under two to play in the third. 11-point lead for the Lady Trojans. Shepard in the corner. Spins, puts it up, off the back iron. No, Hardwick with the board. Would have been a really pretty move had she got that one to go, though. Possibly a play of the week nominee. Into the lane, kicks it over to... Henthorn, she just hit a three, but she'll back it out. Under 90 seconds left in the third. 
And again, hands in the passing lane for Centerberg. Hardwick to Hanthorne, back to her. Skip oh, pass, wow. great pass, layup good. Really great pass there by Lydia Hess. Threaded the needle to Longsdorf, and she makes it a nine-point game with a minute left in the third. Nearly got a walk, but instead it'll be a foul against Cardington. Let's take a look at that pass one more time. Through two defenders, great seal as well by Longsdorf. Yeah, really good seal. Really good seal and a good, good court vision there by Lydia Hess to get him an easy one. Stowe across the timeline. 45 seconds left and with another can check foul. That'll be against Henthorpe. That's their fifth. That's going to, nope, just a, yeah, that's their fifth team foul. They put it wrong on the scoreboard. Okay. I was going to say, they should be shooting now. So not the break you want for Cardington. As Centerberg will have a chance to get this back to double figures with the clock stopped in the third. Stowe, first free throws of the night. In and out, tough luck there. And as always, I apologize for the announcer jinx. In and out on the second, miss both. Break there for Cardington. Now they have a chance here with a three to get this to two possessions. Yep, need to be patient here. Plenty of time with 30 seconds left in the quarter. I'd be fine with having the last shot of the quarter. Too strong, knocked out of bounds, but it stays with Cardington. Henthorne with the quick release. She had an opening there. It was on the line, but just a little too much. However, deflected out, they'll get another chance with 25 seconds left. No, she did, and, and the last one she shot, she made, so she she's warranted to shoot that one. She will get the inbounds. Let's see now with 20 seconds to go if they hold for the last shot. Hardwick gets it to Calkins, 13 seconds. Baseline jumper goes. Henthorne gets the bucket to fall, or fifth of the third quarter. Oh, Got to pick up full quarter here. Stowe, left side for three at the buzzer, short, and that is how quarter three will end. Cardington wins the quarter. They trail only by seven as we head to money time. Hi, I'm Joe Baylog, and you're not. Hall of Fame coach turned future Hall of Fame host. Now he's on TV hosting his own. Highlighting our team in the Joe Shield Zone. Hall of Fame coach, now a host. Sharing our stories from coast to coast. From the court to the screen, he's the best. Jules like to see Liz on in the Joe Shield Quest. Because this is my show. And it's an all new me in the new year. Deal with it. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. It is money time here from Cardington, Ohio. Centerberg looking to take 
a one game lead in the loss column in the KMAC with three games left. However, Cardington, they've been in this situation before. They still got a shot. No, they very much do. They yeah. very much do. And they turned over center, Burr, Not doing but that, right though. back. Laramore into the lane, Ooh. blocked. And it'll stay, but again, that transition stopped by Cardington. A lot of contact for, for no whistle. It was a 9-6 quarter, Kinston Henthorne for Cardington, five of those points. Ball nearly stolen away there. Stays with Cardington and then a reach in foul. Yeah, Cardington's gonna have to match up here. Henthorne called for her second. And I, I and I am a, I am pro shot clock in high school basketball. I am. I very much am. That's the biggest difference at the college level, I think, is the speed of what you have to play. So you've seen the viral video that we put out. I didn't. Of Cardington loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. I watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're, they're not going to guard you. No, then, you have you know? to. Cardington does get the turnover. Now, here's the thing. There is no line through the pirate head at midcourt. There is no line through the pirate and head. And it kind of threw off Centerberg there. I do want to know, is that is there a rule against that? Like, it's do you a, have you to have a half-court line? It's oh, kind of outlined. Do, it's but gray. It, okay. It's very, very faint. Good ball movement. Boom! Big time three by Henthorne here. She is awoken in the second Travis, half. Travis, it's down to four. We're back to a four-point game. We've got a game, folks. As we expected the whole way through. Shepard. Setterberg now looking to try and get an answer. Oh. And we'll get a tough luck foul. But let's take a look at that three on the other end. Listen, the ball touches short corner and it gets a zone. That's where you want. Headthorn is energized on defense. She's running around like a madman. Kind of fouling away from the basket which you don't want to do, but she's pumped up about that last three. Calkins called for her second foul. 6.41 left in regulation, nearly turned over. Oh. It is Centerberg, 10th turnover. Calkins, a great save. Pass into the lane, layup, foul, nearly went, but the Lady Pirates have a chance to make this a one possession game. What a pass in transition, almost an and one. What a bit an incredible finish for Jill Berkey here. First foul on Kenley Farrell. Listen, her sister was freaking awesome. She was a player, was she not? I think she went, if I'm not mistaken, I think she went to Cedarville to play both softball and basketball. Jill hits the first. Because Cardington's a big-time girls softball school, Yes. right? Oh, yeah. And I think she was one of the stud pitchers. Yes. Jill, a 47% free throw shooter, and I should have waited until she shot this free throw first. Yeah. My bad. Well, but she was two. three of three before that shot. Nonetheless, it is a one possession game. 32-29 with 6.15 left. We've got a long way to go. That's deflected out. It'll be Centerberg ball. Carnington just kind of in scramble mode defensively. Got Centerberg out of sorts. And like I said, maybe this is kind of Cardington being in this position many times. Centerberg not as much. There's definitely some experience factor. I know... Um, you know, Kevin Fitzpatrick has been on the staff for a really long time, and Jamie Edwards, who was the previous coach here at Cardington, and had a lot the of success. Of the number one team in Division One, yeah, Alan Tangy, yeah. So, so he, I mean, he's he's one of the better coaches, you know, in the state. He has a resume to kind of back it up. But Coach Fitzpatrick was here for a lot of that. You know, some of these kids, it looks like there's a lot of similar last names. Maybe older siblings or cousins were part of those runs. Um, and, and winning is definitely very much a culture down here in Cardington. And we're talking about the players returning for Centerburg. Only Longsdorf and Hess are gone from this squad. So you got Calkins back, Berkey, 
Hardwick, Henthorne, and then Longsdorf and Halliburton off the bench. So both of these squads, this may be yeah, a rivalry a at the top to of the conference for a few years, kind of like what you guys in Seneca East were the last few Travis, years. Travis, don't make me tell you. <laughs> don't make me tell you the rivalry quote. Oh, yeah. You've told me it many a time. <laughs> many a time. So Centerberg, now they're the team that desperately needs a bucket. They need to get some momentum no, back No, they here. do. Almost a five-second count in the steal. Oh, she traveled. And another timeout. So momentum on the side of Cardington. I think they get away with one there because I think she switched pivot feet. When she picks up her dribble here. Oh. I don't know. Maybe she didn't. But nonetheless, it forces a timeout. Yeah. Centerbrook's down to two timeouts left in the game. Cardington still has three. At least that's what the scoreboard is showing. Yep. The DJ in the house tonight. Got some tunes going. I know. This is great. Got the student section dancing down here. Actually, they got a dance going on with it too. So that's more. This is more one of the more animated girls student sections I've seen all season. Sure. Great atmosphere here tonight. Good crowd too. Into the corner, Johnson gets fouled. That'll be the third team foul against Cardington. It'll be the first. on Morgan Powell, who just checked into the game. Into the corner, Kennedy Glenn fakes the three, gets it straight back out to Farrell. Nearly threw it away, nice one-handed catch by Stowe. Five out look for the Lady Trojans. Johnson now gets into the paint. Johnson. Kicks mm. it left side, open three, too strong. Rebound, Cardington. Great, great look great at look. it, though. Yeah. That was a very well run offensive possession. Just didn't get the look, didn't get the finish to the look that they had. Berkey, corner three for the tie, no good. Johnson comes out with the board. Roof might have came off if that one goes down. Laramore, who's been kind of quiet here in the second half, she hasn't scored yet. This is maybe where you see her and Shepard take this game over, and she's going to get fouled. No more fouls to give left after this one for Cardington. Yeah, and Cardington's kind of just fouled away from the basket, maybe a little bit too early, right? I mean, they're definitely not going to have any fouls to give when it comes down to it. But with 451 left, it's a lot only, of time, especially yeah. with the new rule change. Because the next one, we're at the free throw line shooting. And that's on Powell, so that's her second after just checking in for the junior. Laramore fouled, and she will go to the line. So finally, Laramore getting a, sh a look at the bucket here in the second half. Now she has a chance to get this back to two possessions with free throws. Yeah, listen, she exploded in the first half for 12, and I think she, she – why well, not I think. I, she has not scored yet this half. Nope. Nails the first. I like the long sleeve look too. So for me, it's like she gets some style points. That's yeah. something you see a lot at the college level. Pretty much everybody wears long sleeves. I was a fan of the short sleeve tee, a la Mike Ganzi, back in the early 2000s for West Virginia. My brother wore a, a t shirt <laughs> under his jersey because at the time that was cool. Mike Ganzi, now the GM of the Cavs. I have no idea who Mike Gansy is. Oh, uh, look it up on YouTube. Man, his his game. Small guard, but he played like he was 6'5". In the Calkins, extra pass off the foot of Shepard. It'll stay with Cardington with 425 left. They trail by four. Wasn't the start we were expecting as Centerberg jumped out to a big lead, but we're back to where we kind of expected it to be. It's a four-point game. Turnover by Cardington, though, has been 
really plaguing them tonight. Back out to Stowe. Now to Laramore. Skip pass. They'll run more time. Laramore gets around the defense. Jump stop. Two-pointer. Wow! Big time shot there from her. That's who you want to give it to in times like this. Answer on the other end, short. Shepard on the line when she touched the ball as we take a look. Just look, stop, pop, bucket. Could have been an and one too. I think she was looking for she that. She looked like one. That looked like a little Kevin Durant. Get to your spot, pull up, elevate over the defense. Home and kitchen supply timeout. Cardington still leading the quarter 4-3. But it's a five-point game. <laughs> My cousin just sent me. So that's, Is that Tim? That's Mike Gansey for you. Just sent me a picture of Mike Gansey rocking the, the tall tee. Yeah. Oh, he played for West Virginia. Of that's, course you like him. That's what I said. He played for WVU. I didn't hear that They part. went to that Elite Eight. That, that, uh, that Was run he with, with like Pitsnoggle? Yeah. Pitsnoggle, really? Gansey, Dior Fisher, Joe Hairbear. That was Beeline's first squad to do that, that miracle run. And if they would have hit one shot against Louisville in that Elite Eight, they would have been in the Final Four, but they Wait, blew who that big lead. Him? John Beeline. He, really? Before he went to Michigan, he was at West I didn't Virginia. Know that. Yeah, Michigan stole two of our coaches. So that wasn't Bob Huggins' team? No, it was Bob Huggins came after, Got it. Uh, after he left for, for Michigan. Michigan. Yep. Him and Rachrod. Reason why West Virginia fans hate Michigan. Shepard with the steal. Nice oh, pass to Laramore. Pass. Layup good. Centerberg getting some momentum back. 20th turnover on Cardington. Pass to Calkins. Deflected back out and then stolen. Oh, no. Laramore smartly slows it down. Gets it to Stowe with 3.12 left. Eight-point lead for Centerberg. And she goes backcourt. That time it was over, the line was there. <laughs> the line was there. Coach Abner is saying, relax, relax, like we're okay. You know, they got it to eight here. Cardington catches a break, there's still life. But they got to capitalize here. Yeah, we're down to the time where they weren't able to do against Centerberg, but about under three minutes, they got to pretty much play perfect on the offensive end. Yeah, and again, I talked about it earlier. I'd like to see a little bit more, some more pass fakes to get that zone to move. Because Centerberg is, is jumping all these passing lanes, so if you could just kind of get them to, to bait them to go somewhere. Hardwick for three. Just a little too strong offensive board right back to her. And Thorne gets it to Hardwick. She's going to drive in, gets it stripped. It'll stay with 2.38 left. Man, between Shepard and Farrell, there's a lot of length out there that make things tough. Is this where you'd want to see maybe some backdoor cuts from Cardington? If Centerberg's trying, kind of overplaying those passing lanes? Yeah, I mean, I guess a zone it's a little bit tougher. But there's definitely some stuff behind the defense here that Cardington isn't necessarily taking advantage of. Hardwick nearly loses it. What's the call? It'll stay. It's right in front of the student section, so we really couldn't see who it deflected off of last, but no. we'll go with the ref's call. Coach Abner is beside himself. Coach Hardwick's breathing a sigh of relief over there. With two and some change to go. Henthorn over to Hardwick. She's going to try the three again, too strong this time. Laramore gets the board. And we'll get a foul. So, back to the free throw line. Centerberg goes with 2.06 left. That'll be Henthorne's third. But this is now where Centerberg can clinch this. At the yeah, absolutely. And, and you got... You know, in my opinion, your best player at the free throw line with league title implications on the line. 
So you're in a good spot if you're Centerberg. Now I will say this, Centerberg's got quite the schedule. They're playing back-to-back -back against Cardington, then they're going to play back-to-back -back Freddie Bird games against Fredericktown with a game in between. She hits both. And that was because of the illness that they right. had. So the rivalry game's coming up after this, so don't, don't count some craziness sure. out in the KMAC yet. But they need to finish this out at least to have a shot. Three in the air. Off the mark, another offensive board, put back, rolls around and in. Calkins with her sixth point. Back to an eight-point game. Laramore, triple team, but gets it away. Nearly turned it over, but Shepard gets it. Closely guarded by Calkins. Weaves her way through, Ooh. jumps on it, and it's stolen away. But a travel on the other end. Take a look at the replay, Coach. Actually, it's not a foul, but maybe could have been. Or a jump ball. Yeah, I don't know. Nonetheless, the referees call it a walk. I guess they felt that, that she had enough possession to call that. Did she have two feet down in play? <laughs> Did, that she rule a football here? Rule? Did she make a football Did she move? make a football move? Oh, no. Oh, no. Indeed. Was it touched? Coach, let me see. Let me know. I don't think that was deflected. And they say it wasn't deflected. Oh. Centerberg turnover. I didn't see the ball move at all past the hand no, of the it, Cardington it, defender. I didn't either. It's hard to tell from up here. It put us in the nosebleeds. I like this spot. Especially, no offense to the band, but when the band's not here and it's blaring in your ear, it's a good Better. spot to play. Three in the air, again too strong over the backboard, but stays in play. And Hardwick, just all she could do is give it up. Shepard. Kind of got away with a walk oh, there. Oh, oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. Alley oop. Yeah. I think that could have been a lot worse than what it actually ended up. So hopefully she's okay. That's Abigail Hardwick, her third foul, but she's going to take a seat and get checked on by the trainer here. Since she's all right, we'll show it one more time, but talk yeah. about giving your body up for the game. Jeez. Might have scared her a little bit more than anything. Mm -hmm. It'd scare me if I did that. Only I'm much older and I'd probably break half of my bones in my body if I did that. Oh, I would have torn an Achilles and an ACL and a I'd couple be down. vertebrae. Yeah. Kennedy Glenn. Chance to push it to ten. She does, and she has ten. Second free throw, is it? Cardington turns it over. And that might be the game right there. 42.6 left, Centerberg by 10. We're going to get a home and kitchen supply timeout by Coach Abner. It'll give us a chance to look in at Winford Upper. The Royals, 43-36 over Upper in the third quarter. Q92-7. Looks like there's a lot of people at that game. This is a this could be I'm a good year for Winford. They're just in a tough district. Crestview, Margareta in there. Yeah, the D3 district is tough. That Norwalk district. 
That D2, D2 is going to be crazy as well. I'm going to say this, Travis, and I probably am not allowed to say this, but uh, I hate Winford's new gym. You know what? It's, it's okay to say that. It's small, isn't it? It's small. It's... It's just not it's just not the house of thrills. It's just not the house of thrills. There's something about that old Winford gym, even though I never won there. <laughs> maybe once, maybe one time. Well actually uh Winford boys had to play Seneca East there because the yeah. scoreboard went out and Seneca East won. That's an up and coming team this year, boys side, Seneca yeah, East. Yeah, they they've surprised some teams. Knocked they off really have Crawford and Winford on the road. Just outside my country roads rankings, but they continue to impress. They may make it. They actually, they did get in there. My bad. There's four what, Northern 10 boys teams in my top. Really? Uh, it's just, it's nothing against the other conferences. It's just those teams are so good right now. Cardington with the steal. Won't get the bucket to go. And we're going to get a jump ball. And it'll stay with Cardington with 23.6 left. You have three girls Northern 10 teams in my top five and four boys teams in my top five. However, not neither sides are led by a Northern 10 squad. We have Loudonville girls, Crestview boys. And rightfully so. I don't think you'd have anybody arguing with either one of those. Nope. Foul against Centerburg. Clara Johnson's first. Two free throws for Halliburton. Misses the first. Also, a shout out to head coach Tyler Bates. Him shout and his out, wife Coach Bates. Had their second child over the weekend. A beautiful baby girl. Congratulations to them. And I am so sorry, Coach. You're not going to be able to sleep a lot for the next. He wasn't going to be sleeping anyway. That's true. That's true. He's got a he's got a state ranked squad to look after. Full timeout Cardington, so we'll go back and look at Winford. Also Crestview, they've been really impressive on the boys' side. I would like to see them play. They knocked off Crawford at Crawford at the buzzer. They have a win over Madison. They steamrolled St. Paul, who was the second best team in the Firelands Conference. That was a game Brian and I saw personally. As you see on the left side of the screen, that's our DJ for the night. Catch him at the local uh, pizza shop here after the game will be my guess. Maybe up at Pizza Bird. Throwing some turntables. <laughs> Is uh, Lucas Crestview's best win then? Crawford. Crawford. Colonel Crawford, yeah. Crawford's really. Everybody expected Crawford listen, to be down. You never, you never. Listen, it's a David Sheldon coach team. He's they do get everything. They do it. everything right. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, and I they, coach Crawford's for, got a big win at Lucas, too. Yeah, they do. 12 they point do. victory. So, yeah, you can't ever count out a David Sheldon coach team. I don't think that was deflected. It was not, so. Should get the ball out back down here, then. That's what they're going to do. Nobody touch it. It's going to be spotted down here. Listen, like, my goal. Right, when I coached was very much to do things the way that like Dave Sheldon and Joe Baylog did. Right. Mm -hmm. now, I mean and I coach differently than what they do, but like to me those are people that you look up to and that's who you want to kinda try Three to be in the like corner off the mark. Offensive board though for Cardington. They gotta get a shot off. They do miss. Another offensive board put back. Another offensive board and a foul. With 1.2 left, it'll change the score, but not the outcome. Yeah, and Joe Baylog only has 598 wins. Yes, yeah, so why would Sheldon you not has look up over to what 400 wins, something like that. So I mean, they just do things the right way, and like they get the most out of their players. 100. percent I mean, look what Crawford's graduated over the last three years. Yeah, and they have a sensational sophomore coming up now. And Payne DeGray. Payne DeGray, yeah, he's tough. Going to have a lane violation. So 
So Centerberg's going to get win number 12 on the season, win number seven in the conference, and a one-game lead in the loss column in the Knox Morrow Athletic Conference. They have three games left to clinch a KMAC championship. 41-32 is the final. We'll take a break and be back with our Sphere on Mid-Ohio, or actually our Knox Community Hospital, MVP, live and free. Hi, I'm Joe Baylog, and you're not. Hall of Fame coach turned future Hall of Fame host. Now he's on TV hosting his own. Highlighting our team in the Joe Show Zone. Hall of Fame coach, now a host. Sharing our stories from coast to coast. From the court to the screen, he's the best. Jules like to see Liz on in the Joe Show Quest. Because this is my show. And it's an all new me in the new year. Deal with it. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Join me, Travis Big League Berardi, every other Wednesday for my Country Roads rankings, the top five girls and boys small school basketball squads right here in the area. Exclusively on The Joe Show. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Stop by Webb's Marathon to join the Webb's Rewards Program where you can earn dollars off fuel and free 
drinks and coffee. Go Trojans! Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Morrow County Job and Family Services. Call the number in the description or visit their location in Mount Gilead to see what services are available for your family. Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Once again, 419-946-8480. Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and bath, windows and doors since 1970. Sphere on Mid-Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. And North Central State College, providing individuals with the knowledge, skills, and inspiration to succeed in their chosen paths. Thank you all for allowing us to be live and free this evening. for our Knox Community Hospital MVP. It is Centerburg senior Kennedy Glenn. Kennedy with three more big threes, just like she did on Saturday. A couple free throws as well. 11 points to second on the team for the Lady Trojans as you get a big win here at Cardington. First of all, congratulations. Um, you know what I appreciate about you, Kennedy? What? Shoot or shoot. Yeah. You know, you take a lot of shots when you're open, but it doesn't phase you. You hit two big threes in the first half, kind of slowed down there towards the end, but in the second half you hit another big three. Just what's, what, what is your thought process when you're out there, you're open, you're shooting? I work on shooting all the time, before practice, after practice, during school, late nights. So I just know that I have to stay confident. My dad has always told me to stay confident. Shout confident out, and, yeah, and just shoot all the time. Like whenever I'm open, I just have to stay confident. My coach know, is confident in me. All my teammates are too. So I just got to know and believe that I can do the same. How important was that first quarter for you guys? 16-6, that's pretty much the difference in this game. Yeah, it was huge. We started off very strong, which was really good to lead by 10 in the first quarter. So um, going into the game, coach always says play four. And so starting the first quarter with playing the first quarter the, the way that we did was huge just to try to keep our momentum up the whole game. Um, you knew Cardington was going to make a run. They did at the end of the second quarter to get really back into this game, uh, second and the third quarter. Uh, just what did Coach tell you guys when they made a run? I know he called a timeout there, and it kind of settled you guys down. What did he say in that huddle just to get you guys back and focused to play the rest of the game? He just said to calm down. We knew that they were going to make a run at some point. They're a good team, and they knew that this was a huge game for us and for them too. So we just needed, knew that we need to calm down, play our games, play our defense the way we know how to, and just execute on offense. First place Centerberg, how's that feel? It's huge. First time in forever, it feels like it's huge. But you played two and three games against Cardington. Now you get two and three games against Fredericktown. Two Freddie Bird games in a matter of a week again. Mm -hmm. What you guys need to do to refocus and take on a rival twice to you win both, you clinch at least a share of the conference championship. So what do you guys need to do here to get ready in four days to take on Fredericktown? Coach always says that the day that we win, we just have to in, like embrace that. But then the next day we have practice and we have to get our heads straight for the next game. The next game is always the biggest game of the year for us. And so we just have to know that to execute, do our best in practice all the time, and just like keep learning and keep just doing what we need to do. And that is how you win games. You don't focus ahead of other teams. Yep. Lastly, as always, the easiest thing for you to do. You want to look into the camera and give anybody a shout out. Go for it. My mom, my dad, my sister, my grandma for coming, my team, my coaches. 
and just everybody for coming and support all the time. There you have it. Tonight's MVP brought to you by Knox Community Hospital. Kennedy Glenn of the first place. Sandberg Lady Trojans, congratulations. Thank you. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Back here as we wrap things up inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services post-game show where Centerburg takes sole possession of first place in the Knox Morrow Athletic Conference with the 41-32 victory. Travis Berardi back here with Coach Abram Capel. Coach, that was a Big win for Centerburg. It looked like they were going to run away with it. Cardington fights back, and then it turned out to be a gutsy win for them. Yeah, listen, a game of runs, and, and that's exactly what basketball is. It was a lot of back and forth. I think the, the run to start the game, obviously, it, it kind of held true as they ended up winning by nine, and that's about where it was early. So, um, you know, give credit to Cardington, though, making adjustments, working their way back into it, cut it to four there. It was 32-28 at one point. Um, you know, kind of just exerted all that effort to work themselves back into the game and just didn't have enough gas to kind of finish things off. So two tough losses in one week to the same team, but, you know, they're right on the cusp of, you know, kind of turning the corner and, and you know, making some noise when they enter the tournament. So technically Cardington, actually they're not. Cardington's game back, but it could technically be a tie in the standings because they have two more wins, things like that. But Centerberg has the... Has the upper hand here with the one game lead as we take a look at the final statistics brought to you by Morrow County JFS. Uh, three point shooting. That turned out to be the difference here. They hit six threes compared to Cardington's two. Also, Cardington turnovers. It was the same thing as, as at halftime. Mm -hmm. Perimeter shooting and turnovers were the difference in this game. No, yeah, and it's tough to win. Like, if you're Cardington, you turn the ball over 24 times, and that goes back to your keys to the games that we talked about uh, early on. And, you know, Centerburg was just a little bit more consistent throughout. Um, you know, and, and they made some timely plays. And like we talked about, Cardington did some things that were really nice to work themselves back into the game, but just – just not enough left in the tank to kind of, uh, you know, come over that hump there late. Cardington out rebounding Centerburg, twenty-six to fourteen. Also out rebounding them on the offensive glass, but when it was all said and done, the turnovers were the big problem for them. Taking a look at some individual stats for both sides here tonight. First for Centerberg, they were led by Kayla Larimore's game high 19 points. She's right at her average once again. She continues offensively and defensively to be a big bright spot for the squad. Yeah, she's tough. Um, you know, she does a lot of things well on both ends and you know, she was definitely one of the most consistent, and she was a player that stuck out to me um, on both ends in, in her length and her athleticism. And being just a junior, she's only going to get better and averaging 19 points a game. Um, you know, I could see her winning KMAC Player of the Year if, if they end up, you know, coming away with the title. Um, so she might get some individual accolades with that as well. Yeah, she's got a good shot at that. Kennedy Glenn, our MVP, 11 points, but three big threes, two in the first quarter pretty much, and then a big one in the third to really slow down Cardington's comeback. Seven points from Tierra Shepard, three from Evie Stowe, one from Clara Johnson. As for Cardington, they were led by Kinston Henthorne's eight points, Abigail Hardwick with seven. Hopefully she's all right after that tumble she took. Madison Calkins with six, Jill Berkey with five, Maggie Halliburton with three, Genevieve Longsdorf and Lydia Hess with two. Score by quarter, 16-6. 
Centerberg in the first. That was pretty much the difference was that first quarter. 10-10 in the second, 26-16. Centerberg at the break. 9-6 third for Cardington. They cut the lead to 32-25. And then Centerberg finishes things out 9-7 for the 41-32 victory. Any final words from you, Coach, before we head out of here? I'm going to give a shout-out to my boy Danny Rowe. So, shout him out. Shout-out Danny Rowe. Coming up, that, that's it. Coming up for Centerberg on the 30th, so four days from now, Tuesday night, they are at Fredericktown. 6 p.m. start, Freddie Berg Part 1, the first of two games in nine days against Fredericktown. And then on the 17th, they finish out with East Knox to finish out their KMAX schedule. As for Cardington, as well, Tuesday they host Mount Gilead at 7.30, their KMAC finale before they take on Lucas, Clear Fork, and your Buckets of Buckeye Central to finish out the schedule for them before the tournament. But that'll wrap things up here in the KMAC Game of the Week. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible tonight. Jeremy Peoples, well done on the camera work. I know he wants to be somewhere covering a wrestling match. He'll be there at Centerburg, though, on Saturday for that wrestling meet. You can watch it live and free. Webb's Marathon and Automotive, our scoreboard sponsor. Knox Community Hospital, our MVP sponsor. Morrow County Job and Family Services, our pregame, halftime, postgame sponsor. Ohio Means Job, Morrow County, our instant replay sponsor. Home and Kitchen Supply, our timeout sponsor. And our commercial sponsors, Spherion Mid-Ohio, North Central State College. Also want to thank the fine folks here at Cardington for allowing us to come here tonight for this game and the OHSA for allowing us to stream these games to you live and free. For Coach Abram Capel, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long from Cardington.